the actual everyday practice of dealing with garbage. We all have to do it. <laughs> so I'd very much like to hear your thoughts about this when we're done. So I'm going to begin with a clip from the BBC that's talking about the garbage, the nightly garbage ritual in Taiwan. And probably all of you know about this. Many of you know about this. I'm sure that some of you have participated in it. Um, how, anyone in this room taken garbage out in Taiwan in the last five years? Only one? <laughs> Two? OK, so this is new for you, maybe. Pardon? I think most people know how to collect garbage in Taiwan. Are you sure? Definitely. OK, well, we'll see. Every evening over Taipei, husbands, housewives, grandparents, and domestic helpers gather in the streets around the same time. They all own the same blue plastic bags. They chat with each other as they wait. But what are they waiting for? They're waiting for the garbage truck, which generally comes in the evenings, five nights a week. The melody is a reminder that it's time to take out the garbage. Throughout Taiwan, people have to dump their own rubbish into the rubbish trucks by themselves. Taipei residents have to put their garbage in special city-approved blue plastic bags, which they must buy themselves. Residents in other cities are charged a fee based on how much water the household consumes each month. Either way, the goal is to discourage people from generating too much garbage by charging them a fee based on how much garbage they create, rather than a flat fee like in many countries. Residents also have to separate recyclables from the rest of their trash and dump them into recycling vans that are tagged behind the garbage trucks. These don't have to be put into blue plastic bags that cost money, so there's an incentive to separate recyclables out from the trash. But residents have to keep track of which day newspapers, cardboard boxes, and plastic bottles are collected. So it's Thursday today, which means cans and plastic bottles. And what's even more unusual about Taiwan's trash collection system is that people are required to separate their kitchen waste from the rest of their trash. Kitchen leftovers are then sold to pig farmers, who pick out the fish bones and other dangerous items. They boil the leftovers into gruel and feed them to their pigs the next day. Okay. And the video continues, but it's a pretty elaborate separation of garbage, and you have to know which night it is. And it's some, um, maybe we could turn the light back on now, so that I can see. Thank you, that's great. Okay. So in my field, we read papers. <laughs> so just warning you that that's what we do. So garbage trucks in Taiwan traverse the streets broadcasting either Beethoven's Fur Elise or Badazuska's Maiden's Prayer. Their melodies call residents to regular collection points in every neighborhood. As the first screen of this Google search shows, um, there's been a lot of international, you can't actually read it, can you um, focus it? Yeah. If you just put in Taiwan garbage truck song, you'll get more than 10 pages of Google, Google searches. <laughs> so this has been a subject of fascination, especially for foreigners. You know, it's not uncommon for someone new to Taiwan to hear the music and run out and think they're going to get ice cream. <laughs> That's very common kind of confusion. So while there's been a lot of international attention, just kind of superficial attention, looking at this kind of funny thing about the Beethoven coming out of the garbage truck, what hasn't really been looked at is the kind of habits and practices that happen every day in a household surrounding <laughs> my former student. Hi, nice to see you. Sorry. Um, so the, these practices surrounding garbage pickup and its signature melodies. So all of these kinds of things have seeped into a very wide range of sensibilities in Taiwan, and you might not really expect that. So today in my paper, you're going to get to um, think a little bit about how these things become so influential. So there's a scholar called Gay Hawkins, and she argued in her book, the book called Ethics of Waste, that, quote, styles of waste disposal are also styles of self. In managing waste, we constitute an ethos and a sensibility. Our waste habits, all those repeated routines, 
leave their traces on our bodies and our environment, end quote. And to this, I add that in Taiwan, traces are also left in music. So with my research, I'm exploring the presence of these sensibilities in not only the text of songs, but also in the music. And I look at songs dating from the early 1980s through to the present. So for many people living in Taiwan, garbage and its collection are vital threads in the tapestry of daily life in a way that they simply are not for most Americans. And you guys all know that Taiwan is a semi-tropical island and that it has a large human population numbering over 23.4 million people. And many of those live in urban areas. And if anybody's been to Taipei 101 recently, then this is a familiar sight. So I use this slide when I'm speaking to an audience that doesn't know very much about Taiwan to give an idea of the density of population. And the area of Taipei that I live in, that's always around Yongpangjie when I go to Taiwan, has a pretty high density population, about 43,000 people per square mile. So due to the tight quarters, Taipei residents generally can't store their garbage outside of their living area, unlike Americans who place their garbage in large waste bins and they usually put them in their garage or patio or alley and they wait for the weekly pickup. So people in Taipei don't have that luxury. Um, and of course, Taiwan's humid and warm climate also accelerates decomposition and this climate is especially hospitable to rats and several types of cockroaches. And you guys probably know those ones that uh, measure over an inch, and some of them can fly. <laughs> I learned in the process of doing this research that males fly and females don't. Just so you know, next time, you can give them names. All of these factors combine to make municipal waste collection a pressing almost daily event. So missing the evening garbage pickup means risking the intrusion of cockroaches or rats into one's living space. In my Taiwanese friend's home, where I usually stay when I'm um, there on a short visit, the practice is to keep the garbage generated after pickup in the refrigerator. You don't do that? We always do that. Like, what are you going to do? I want a snack. It's 9 o'clock. The garbage truck is gone. I can't leave it just there. So you have to keep it out of the way of intruders. Um, so this practice, I, according to my experience, is not uncommon for people to put the garbage in the refrigerator. Or you have to take it to your friend's house who might have a later garbage pickup. Or there's some alternative system for garbage collection, like um, in some expensive high-rise buildings, they have some alternative system, like you just put it there and somebody else takes care of it. But most people, I think, have to deal with it personally. So the anxieties surrounding garbage and its collection resonates in a surprisingly large number of popular songs. <laughs> and to date, I've gathered almost 40 songs that mention garbage. And some of them are kind of very popular songs. This is surprising. If you look at American pop music, for example, I don't think you see people talking about garbage too much. So um, these kind of references to garbage also appear commonly in films. And you, I don't know if you've thought about that before, but it's kind of when you start looking at it, you find a lot of these things. So what is likely to be the earliest reference to garbage in Taiwan's popular music? is a song by Luo Dayou called Super Citizens. And this song came out in 1984, just as Taiwan's environmental movement was gaining in strength. So in his song, Luo Dayou takes garbage as evidence of the failure on the part of both average citizens and the government to protect the environment when he sings of garbage drifting down the Dan Shui River and smoke burning from a garbage dump. And here's a picture I think it's taken from like, um, what is it? Oh, geez. Um, Zhongho, not Zhongho. Mm -hmm. Sanchong. <laughs> yeah, Sanchong. It's across the Dan Shui River from downtown Taipei, mm -hmm. this landfill. So in his song, he's speaking about something that looks very much like this. And so in his song, he takes the theme of garbage as a sign of environmental degradation 
and that theme continues to be heard in pop music up to today. And there are many more songs in Taiwan that don't specifically mention garbage, but talk about environmental degradation. And one of those, for example, is Jay Chow's song, Terraced Rice Field, and he talks about um, degradation of the environment. And just for fun, we'll listen to a little bit of this song, and I'd be really curious to know if any of you guys remember this song. Mm -hmm. 